Hello, hello, hello! <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my goodness, we are almost prepped and ready to go. Hey Michael, if you are listening, I did ask one quick return question. I'm excused? Oh great, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that it's time where we just dive right in. Hello and welcome to the official Rockfish Game stream. I am your host and your guide, Everspace 2. This is Eric Schrader that we're working on. Reverse that. And my goodness, I'm the community ambassador. Got my twisted tongues today. Oh, it's delightful. We are diving right into the Drake system. Opening right now. We have we got in the background. We are going to be literally flying around, checking this out. You guys voted on this, by the way. Anybody who didn't know, uh, we had a little poll in the Discord. started this morning, or for, I guess, some of you might have been this evening, depending on where you're in the world you are at. Um, and I just asked four hours prior to the stream if you wanted to see a hot location or a cold location. And the viewers... Man, you guys, like, a, you just completely ratioed it. Like, freaking, I feel bad for anybody who wanted to see more fire. Because uh, we're, we're not showing that today. We are focused on ice. Which means we're going to be checking out one of the retaliator bases. 
as well as exploring what those ships look like in combat. Now, I should also state for the record, per usual, that what you see here is in fact early access. And to that, the summer update, it's not done yet. You know this because it's not in your hands. Granted, it's also not quite summer yet, but I digress. Still, we have a couple more little tweaks and updates, even to like the ship models that you are about to see. So if you see something that looks a little off or weird, that's why, because this of course is an early access build. And uh, what I am showing you is in fact, not complete. There we go. So now that we got that out of the way, I think it's time that we uh, check this out. Whew. Oh my gosh. Oh goodness. Hello everybody. Oh, I see lots of howdies and highs and, and, and welcomes. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited. I'm excited to get up in this. That's what I'm excited to do. Oh my goodness. Where are we? Where are we? Hmm. Curious. Ooh. All right. Well, guys, we are, of course, going to be exploring a bit of this location and talking about retaliators. So let's turn on our HUD. Let's see what uh, we got going on here. Oh, yeah. Quick, uh, quick talk about our builds. Um, so we are flying a Vanguard. Oh, I didn't change my perks. Whoops. That would have been important. This is a precision based Vanguard build. Um, so the idea here is that we have some close range weaponry, this scatter gun. It's a Starforged rapid repeater. And we are going to just be getting all up behind our opponents. We've got one of the very new passives, in fact, that uh, I'm in the complete, the complete way of. Here, let me go to the other side. There we go. Flying closely behind an enemy grants 20% increased weapon damage. So the name of the game for us is maximizing this expertise, which was modified. We did make an adjustment here. Um, let me find the exact wording that Hans Christian gave me for it, in fact. Um, <clears throat> but the Vanguard need a little bit of love. So the rear, the critical rear attack expertise um, is now multiplicative instead of additive. So that's a, that's quite the change, um, in fact. And you'll be seeing that, uh, you know, decently so um, from this particular build because of our precision here. So uh, just to give you an idea of what that means so that none of you guys are like looking at this and trying to calculate. And then we'll get to the location. I know so many people are, are eager to see the location. Um, so the rear attack critical chance that I've got going on here is 310%. Somebody might look at that and like, you can't have over 100% critical hit chance. That's not what that means. This is an increase to this value of your critical hit chance. So 310% of 17.4 right so just take 17.4 and multiply that effectively by three and that is what our critical hit chance is going to be when we are behind our opponents that is not a small number for a percentage increase i think it's almost 50 percent chance to get a critical hit when we are behind them and also keep in mind this passive or the one that i'm blocking 20 percent weapon damage increase on top of that which again is multiplicative 20 percent of this added on so uh, yeah, it's gonna, well, we're gonna have some um, pr pretty nice hits uh, flying behind. So let's go in here and let's talk about some of the stuff that we see. First off, like, my goodness. Environmental though, uh, we're pretty happy with the results. You can see little floaty bits of ice down here. Oh yeah. We have a frost shield drone over here, it looks like. Let's go see what that's all about. A couple more of them. All right, here we go. Gonna let them get a little bit closer. I see that frost shield drone is working its magic on one of its nearby allies. So let's see if we can take it out a little bit further away. Okay. Whoop. 
feeling pretty good so far. So these frost shield drones, as you can probably imagine, are providing a shield to nearby targets. Now, unlike an armor drone that gives just a passive benefit to everything, these frost shield drones have to focus on one single target nearby that belongs to their respective faction. The frost shield, as you probably can imagine, dang near negates all shots fired at it. And it also gives these enemies one other passive benefit. And we'll let him hit us a couple times. Or not, he's just a terrible shot. There we go. Up at the top, you see we've got a frost percentage thing start to accrue. But we're not going to let it maximize, are we? At least not yet. Because all the retaliator ships have weaponry that will slowly cool your ship off over time. And if that reaches 100%, I mean, you've seen the trailer, right? You've seen the trailer. All right. So those frost shield drones, they can, they can put their shield on basically any other ally nearby, and they're generated from the retaliator bombers. Ah, here's one now. We also have a slew more of retaliator drones. Oh yeah, let's look at this real quick. Yeah. Oh, like we're underwater and we don't get the, the rain effect anymore. It's like we know what we're doing and how to like put the game together. That's nice. Oh, goodness. Oh, that water looks... Looks like it'd be such a splash to dive into. Oh. All right. Let's head on over here. <laughs> So we're gonna take a quick look at these models um, and there's a Zerulia bomber in here. And we've got Zerulia scouts. My goodness, Zerulia, you're not supposed to, to be here for the showcase. We're not ready to show you yet. What are you doing here? The people asked for retaliators. Ah, screw it, they're here, why not? We'll take a quick, we'll take a quick peek. So here, this is one of the Retaliator's drones. Now again, these models are incomplete. We still have a little bit more work to do, but you can tell they are very much, they've got this nice, cool theme across their looks, right? The icy blue, the lights shining through. Don't worry about this weapon poking through the front, all right? Early access is fun, let me tell you what. These are getting close to finished up. You get a two for the price is one in here. I can't believe it. We're gonna just pass by that Zerulia, nice and slow like for anybody who wants to take a quick capture. But this is what we're looking at here. Look at this retaliator bomber. You can see they've got a couple more pieces and parts that separate them out from the other variants of bombers. And again, it's that, that nice frosty finish going. Man, look at that, look at that detail. My, my goodness. Matthias, you mad lad. All right. And this is one of the frost shield drones in effect. Has a very similar look to the armor drone, yep. <clears throat> but again, has a couple distinct features that set it apart. And that little frosty effect with the frost shield. I'm gonna say frost a lot, but look at this. Isn't, the, isn't this neat? I, just, I like this. I like this a lot, how it comes together. Man, that almost looks like there's a comet streaking out of the sky. That's uh, that's pretty nuts. But this is the overarching theme that we have for the Retaliators. As many of you kind of already guessed from the concept art, which we might show again uh, today, if possible, if we got some time, and we probably do. We're gonna head away from those Zerulia uh, units though, and we're gonna go to this Retaliator dr drone carrier now. Now, this one is much more in a work in progress phase. In fact, the drones, I don't believe are correct yet, but the ship model has some tweaks that have hit it, and uh, I'm eager to show you something. So we're gonna do that as well. All 
right, here we are. So yeah, here's this retaliator drone. Ooh, look at that icy beam. Oh, beautiful. And here we are with its slow stylization taking hold. I don't think the uh, lights are actually done yet. I think those lights need to be changed to light blue still. And there's, again, like there's gonna be a couple other little tweaks and stuff. You can start to see the variation it has, uh, of course, from the other uh, style of drone carriers that are in the game, which I think there's only one other one. <laughs> How it all comes together. All right. And then also their little drones, which these have not been uh, fixed yet. So, all right, let's get back into this. I'm not saying frost enough. Oh, goodness. Woo! Yeah. That rear crit chance and damage is nice. Woo! Even the explosions! Look at that! Mm. Look at that! Neat. Wow, that's a good. You can also see it in their missiles too. Look at that. It's like everything's just been coded. Everything's been coded. Those aren't even missiles. They're just launching giant icicles at us. That's <laughs> excellent. Fantastic. <clears throat> Woo! So, overall, you can see the theming. Uh, we've been ringing home pretty hard here. Pretty hard in regards to how the retaliators are represented and what they can accomplish. Now, I know some of you uh, are wanting me to do a few things here. And we may or may not. We'll see what happens with the time that we have. Oh my goodness, so many missiles! What's launching all of those things? try and get these frost shields out. Why am I doing this? I'm in a vanguard. I can go fast. All right. That's what I like to see. Beautiful. Now the air is a little bit more cleared up. We can get a little closer to the ground here and have a light conversation about some of the stuff that you have thus seen. So many missiles. Secure container. Oh, of course, we've got some puzzles in the area to accomplish. Oh, is this is this just a simple one? Oh, please don't. I just want your loot. That's all. All the turrets and everything are all nice and decked out. As well. Goodness. They're not going to let me have a break, so I'm just going to go hide. This is nice. All right. 
<laughs> this looks awesome. Yeah, no, it's nice. We've been we've been pretty happy with the effects and um, like bringing all this together and making sure that the world feels right for uh, you know the space that we're cultivating in this part of the story. Um, and we also have some really fun new side missions that will have you venture not only to this location but you know to the fiery sites as well to uh, get a really good handful of new content. That's dropping in the summer update. That comes out this summer. It's feeling pretty good. We also we also stylized our ship for no particular reason, just like this. Eh, you know, no particular reason why. Just felt appropriate for the moment. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, all right. So I'm sure you guys have some questions. Um, let's have some of them and then we'll fly around a little bit longer and then we're gonna bounce over to our save where I can talk about some other changes, improvements and features uh, that we've been doing to the base game as well that I can in fact openly talk about and or show if it's in a showable state. So yeah. The cockpit view, but that looks even better. Yeah, we can we can absolutely fly around in this view. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We uh, I'm I'm digging that already. That's a good uh, good choice. Good choice. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pause right here uh, as we're getting frozen. Let's answer a couple questions. Did I really kill the music? Is the music just gone? Come on, I want I want something in the background. Give me some give me some music. Give me some new music. That'd be great. Please? Some new music, please. You're just gonna deny us game? Come on! Trigger the music! There we go. Excellent, excellent. Alright. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fill that ice meter with the gunship. Probably, yeah. No, um, in my in my poultry testing of the locations thus far, I would say that I have been frosted uh, very easily uh, in the heavier ships because I am also not as good in the heavier ships as you guys know. Um, but the light ships, I'm mostly evasive on that front. But we'll see what happens to you guys whenever this launches this summer, of course. I wonder what the buoyancy of a Vanguard is. I would love to test that out. So I know some of you are really, really, really desiring me to take a dive and to show you what it looks like underwater. However, our underwater systems aren't 100% ready to show. <laughs> ah, so, um, but that'll probably change by next week. Fingers crossed. So maybe we can, uh, maybe we can uh, convince Michael that next week we'll be able to take that uh, specific dip under there. Um, but I do want to make sure that all of you are aware you can in fact go under the water. At least that's going to be the plan. That's going to be the full course of action. Uh, as of right now in the showcase here, we are mainly talking about retaliators and showing you the location, uh, from above the waves. That is the primary focus here today. And we'll definitely fight a few more retaliators and shoot. If Zerulia show up again, I guess we'll have to talk about them too. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, could I let the ship freeze for once? I probably can. I think I can do that. But if I start going too fast uh, towards to the watery grave, uh, I will uh, likely have to cut that out. <laughs> oh my goodness. How deep is the water? So, um, yeah. So, I'm. I know a lot of you guys are wondering about like the the underwater mechanics. So, in short, just like there's a range of motion for the areas that you explore, there's also a range of motion as you go deeper underwater. Um, and uh, that's just gonna be how consistent it is as a whole. I mean, the same applies to the lava planets and kind of like your access and where you would go in that, uh, even though we're not really talking or showing about that today because you chose ice. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, big thing is that there are certain points where you just can't go any further and you have to come back, you know, 
the primary focus, especially, and this is gonna be true in a lot of handcrafted uh, design work, right? Like we want you to stay in the areas that you are meant to explore, the areas that are rich with detail, the areas that have meaningful content. Because while it would be realistic to go flying out here over the horizon and just seeing water as far as the eye can see, um, and you know, some ice shards from here and there, the main point is that in this particular area, at this location, is this base, are, is these ice walls here, and whatever else is beneath here. That is the most important and integral elements of this space, right? And that is gonna be how all of our handcrafted locations are. Like you're, you enter a location and you're gonna be kind of in a center point that you should focus on. And as you go out further to the edges, less and less interesting things, you know, that's how it does. Sometimes you gotta make that sacrifice. I know some people are like, man, I want the whole planet to explore. We, you know, technically we could have done that procedural generation though. It's hit and miss sometimes. And I feel like recently it's been more on the miss side. And so handcrafted is just the direction that we took. And that's why we put that focus in there and why I'm also speaking towards this and how it loops you back around. There's a limitation towards the directions you can go. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So let's see a couple more questions. Will the lava and the fire plant be more ready to show today? No. No, no, no. Were you a bit more concerned all voted for ice? No, not at all. Um, we, like both the fire and ice planets are in an acceptable place for showcasing. But of course there are still limitations, as I said in my disclaimer, uh, just as the stream started, what we can and can't show. <clears throat> so um, yeah, Xerilia units aren't fully fleshed out as well either. So just like the Retaliator, you know, we've got a, a little bit more work on that front. Uh, the same applies to Xerilia units. Let's see if we can uh, have this guy come out. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Now, I don't think this guy's got enough uh, of a punch to freeze us. He would have to have a couple of, of those uh, frost shield drones because not only do they provide a frost barrier, but when they shoot their shots through that shield, it increases the frost chance. So it's both an offensive and defensive shield. And when you see it, uh, keep that in mind because it can seriously pack a punch. It can change the fire uh, of a ship that has that shield to be very, very deep in the frosts. All right. Is there underwater fauna? Oh my gosh, I love these questions. Uh, I mean, just with any locations that we're trying to detail, we want to make sure that there's a, a point to flying around and to those sites. Um, in regards to asking a very specific question of like, what's the content look like underwater? That's just something that we'll have to find out in the future when it drops this summer. I don't even know what to ask. I'm too awestruck. <laughs> All right. Could you show us the under lava system? Oh my gosh, you guys, you're ridiculous. Come on, I want some, I want some sincere question. I'm looking through. I hear people talking about pressure. Cold vacuum of space. I mean, actually, is it is it truly cold though? Wasn't there like a? I feel like there was a there was an argument recently about space not actually being cold. I think it came up in this chat too. I'm not trying to start something. I'm just uh, pointing it out. But I digress. Oh my gosh, you guys, where are the questions? <laughs> Any new resources? I like this question. Um, so as of right now, um, regarding crafting. Um, I would say the most regarding new resources would be just the consumables and their crafting as a whole, which we've talked about in the previous streams. Uh, but there are uh, 
There's a slew of new consumable options, of course, but they are still work in progress as well. As you can see, the way they look is identical to the damage booster here, for example. Still damage booster there, still damage booster there, but they're all unique. Um, but in regards to like the crafting inventory, no, the same stuff uh, applies thus far. Though there still are resources that haven't been fully utilized in all cases. You know, I'm, I've got this plasma here and this dark matter and this biomass just just kind of like casually pointing out um, and what, you know, the future holds on that front. But uh, otherwise, uh, you. Yeah. So that's a, that's a decent question. I like that. I like that. Do we have multiple locations of ice and fire or just one each? Oh, no, no. We're, we're planning on having, um, we're, ha we're definitely, we have, we have places. <laughs> that's a little telling of a question. Um, but yeah, like we didn't, I feel like with a whole fire and ice uh, update, this whole theme that we're going for, I feel like if we just did one location for each, that would probably be a little eh. Um, but obviously you can see with the retaliators, no, you know, no matter where you face them, no matter when you face them, they're always going to be equipped with this, these frost weapons. It's going to carry over with them. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens if we take uh, pummeling from these missiles, this missile barrage. Our goal is to get frozen without dying. We'll see how effective it is. Oh, they're shooting down their own missiles. That's that's silly. I didn't want to dodge the missiles. Come back, come back, missiles. Man, my dodging skills are too good. Just pushing WASD, let me tell you what, guys. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Woo! Okay, that's a nice big icy blast. So you can see once the uh, the percentage meter reaches 100%, um, then, yeah, this happens. This happens to your ship. Nice big explosion. That's actually, this is, I might just save this shot. Uh, one second. That's nice. This is cool. Ha! Ah, puns! Uh, but, uh, it's pretty neat. I'm particularly a fan of, of how this is, uh, is how this is going. Hang on a second. Let's just, mm, yep. Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, uh-oh. Did it just, did the game just die? Oh no, game, come back. Game, come back. Okay, it's better. But we are completely frozen. Oh, I just got control back. But yeah, when you're frozen and we were just getting lined up shots there, uh, you just keep taking a pummeling because you can't move. You can't move, you can't fire, you can't boost, you can't do anything. On that front, it's kind of similar to an EMP but you can also shake it off a bit faster due to its unique properties as well. So for example, um, you know, we have this resistance thing, uh, your whole damage reduction, and there, you also have this debuff duration reduction. That's gonna be incredibly important when it comes to this stacking ice effect and how frequently you can uh, hold that off. There are a couple other modifiers that I believe have been talked about probably, I hope, um, <laughs> that also indicate um, stacking effects that can occur on your ship. And those are going to directly impact like this ice stacking property. So yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us what the max level will be? Uh, Michael's responded. Um, you guys are looking up at the corner here and you see level 23 and I'm building experience because you guys are incredibly observant. We can't sneak anything past you. Uh, but yeah, we cannot, uh, we cannot state what the level is gonna be at this time. Uh, will, will we have enough time to reach the next set of perks? I don't know. Honestly, not sure. Will, will those be ready? I, that's, that's a great question to ask. But sincerely, you know, that's gonna take a lot of time, effort, and energy to accomplish when we've already been working so heavily on these units 
on these locations. And the missions that surround them, I think is very important to address here, even though I would be totally spoiling everything if I showed the missions and I'm not going to. You deserve to experience that when it goes live this summer. Oh my goodness. So, press E, I love you guys, not gonna happen. Though on that front, I will say, we did add shortcuts to where you can access different menus uh, just from here. So like when I do press I, I can go straight to the inventory. I think that was probably already there, but there's other buttons I can push to go straight to all of the different uh, pages now. And no, I'm not going to go to all the different pages, not through this demonstration, because you probably understand that I've cheated to get here to show you this stuff. And I'm not gonna reveal more than what needs be. But uh, this will be opened up and you'll have all those features to bring it all together uh, pretty dang soon. So. With all of that being said, we're gonna bounce back to our stream save and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the other features that we have been working on. Um, just little tweaks here and there mainly, but also pretty happy with the results that have been bringing it all together. Oh, I missed a, I missed a question that somebody said, hey, can you get this question as well? Woo! Was, was the Ocar, Ocar faction, Ocar, Ocar is how you pronounce it, Ocar faction inspired by Babylon 5 ship designs. I know that we are a big fan of sci-fi and we've taken a lot of inspiration, drawn a lot of inspiration from a lot of the classics, um, you know, and Babylon 5 is definitely in there. Um, I would have to specifically ask our concept artists and our, um, and our incredible designers uh, on where they drew that particular inspiration, even from, you know, Everspace One, where the Okar's origin kind of appears at all. Um, probably is my guess. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that whatsoever. Wouldn't be surprised by that at all. Uh, let's see. Ship freezes eject. Yeah, basically. Ice fishing. Why does everyone ask if you can fish in every video game? Well, we have a defrosting device. So there's actually a, I, I love that question because uh, there's actually a consumable. Um, let's see. Where's that? Not damaged, not that one. Ah, there we go. System recovery routine. Removes most debuffs and resets any debuff buildups. So what you're seeing with the ice effect, that's a debuff buildup effect. So this right here, this would counter that. So if we crafted this bad boy, now we have this capability. Oh, I also I also spoke to Tease. So uh, he confirmed that whenever you craft a consumable, you craft it at its max capacity. Much like when you craft a missile, you get the max capacity of it as well. So upon crafting a consumable, you will get the maximum that it provides. So I got four system recovery routines upon crafting. And we would have that ability. So you get frozen, you pop that immediately and you can keep on your merry little way. Especially if you have low resistance like I do, that uh, probably is a good tool for you to use. Does your ship navigate the same underwater? You will find out soon. I will, I will give you, I, I'll let you know that it's a little different. It is a little different, but um, I don't want to be too revealing in that because again, it's going to be, uh, that's going to be details for you guys to experience and explore. Oh, we might just leave this ancient alone. They are mean now, let me tell you what. Also, this is a level 25 ancient. What did I do to deserve this? Probably not giving you all the information. You guys spawned this in, didn't you? Somehow it was you. He's behind the rock. Ah, unfortunate. 
Will going into the icy water also give you the frozen debuff? That would be telling. Oh, come on, we should be at range. Right? Let's see, what's our what's our expertise range? Yeah, we got plus 50% bonus to range, and we have... Oh, okay, so maybe we don't quite have them in range. We need to get a little closer. Looks like we found the level cap for the build. Did you? Uh, I, don't, I don't see how you would uh, come to that conclusion. Baked potatoes on Lava Planet. You guys are so strange sometimes. Will we be able to go into the Lava 2 or not? So, you know, it's interesting that you asked that question. Um, you know, I think there's this strange concept that a lot of video game makers have taken with Lava, and they're like, oh, let's just make it like water, except it's hot. That's, that's not Lava, that's hot water. Um, <clears throat> so... <laughs> Um, <laughs> not sure where to go from that. Uh, <laughs> ah, yes, the hot red orange water. Mmm, tasty. Yeah, we'll we'll learn more about the lava places uh, in the future. Maybe next week we'll do a little showcase of. Uh, Zerulia. That sounds like a good plan since you guys chose ice today. And we'll also sneak back in and do more Zeril uh, retaliator stuff um, a little bit later in the stream once again. I just want to see if I can take out this ancient warden without actually dying from rain. That's good. Yay! All right. The healthy bit of Malamite has two. I didn't choose Ice Fire Nation attack. Oh my gosh, you guys. Woo. Nice, delicious Malamite. That precision mining, though, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Somebody's really mad at me for doing that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fun fact, lava isn't lava when it's underground, it's magma. Oh my goodness, you, you're all dorks. <laughs> and I love each and every one of you. Thank you, sincerely. Don't change. Mm. All right, let's answer some questions with this delicious music. I see a couple of repeat questions just in different ways. Um, guys, and I do wanna, I wanna put a lot of emphasis on this. Um, I want to answer your questions about future content future content so badly, but I cannot reveal stuff that has not been properly revealed yet. So um, while I might be able to give you a, a little bit of details surrounding uh, the concept of an idea that you're trying to get at, and yes, that was incredibly vague intentionally, um, you know, I can't, I can't give you those answers, but I'm more than happy to answer more questions you have about like the retaliators and their weapons. Um, maybe even a little bit about the lore if you are interested on that front. Um, and like I said, we'll also head back over to their planet here um, in a little bit. And we're also gonna be uh, showcasing some uh, community content as well. Like you guys have been taking some pretty awesome screenshots and I wanna make sure that we're putting that focus on you guys too. Um. But yeah, let me jump over here really quick because I know that, you know, I've already told you a little bit about the rebalancing of the Vanguard, making it a bit more effective <clears throat> on that front of 
uh, changing the critical rear attack expertise. Um, it might not be like a massive change, but um, I've been feeling it in my playtesting. Play and I think anyone who really likes the Vanguard and is attempting to obtain that expertise bonus, they're probably gonna get that feeling from it as well. Like it's, it's a nice little bump up in the right direction. Um, so a couple other things. Oh yeah, hang on. Let's um, let's find a, a good spot for this. Uh, we need to look around. We're gonna look around here. I'm gonna head back over here. We got something else to talk about. This is gonna be uh, probably a fun little point of conversation. Whoop, whoop. Uh, we, will we get a reset camera setting? Sometimes I miss the focus up so much or blur it and reset. You have to unpause and retake it. That's actually a nice little suggestion. I would post that on the forums, Sirloin. Um, I love that. I love that. Um, I love that idea. I haven't, I'm not sure if I've seen that yet on the forums posted or not. So you might uh, just check it out and search for like a camera reset option or something like that. Uh, Cause if it's not on there, that could definitely be something we could uh, evaluate and see if we could plug in. I know that we've been tweaking some of those uh, camera settings. Um, at least Andy told me about them uh, a little bit. I don't know if any of them are, are present here yet. I don't think they are. These all look the same to me. So, but uh, yeah, I know that there have been further tweaks on that front. So I wanna go do a uh, I want to go do a thing. We're going to go do a thing. We're going to fly over the, uh, call over the Flying Duchess. Hello there. And I thought I was all alone out here. Sorry for disturbing. No, no, it's fine. Stay. So as we dock with the Flying Duchess, you may or may not notice something that's changed. Can you accidentally reveal the hot planet? No, absolutely not. So something that you guys have been uh, talking about for a while is that the accessibility of ships has been less than ideal in the current game space. And to this, we do agree, in fact. So uh, one of the ways that we are adjusting that, we explored this, this option and we're pretty happy with it. Now, this is not finished. It's not done, all right? So you're looking at this, you're excited. I know, I know you're excited. We have a ship dealer over here at the Flying Duchess. Now, two things. First thing, there's three stinking ships here. That's it. Man, that sucks. Only three ships. What kind of tricks are you trying to pull? Well, let me tell you what type of tricks I'm trying to pull is that this is something you will unlock. So even though these ships are, they're new ships, these are not from your base. <clears throat> They're not from your base, even though that's also been requested a lot. Um, these particular ships, you only get three choices that you would earn, and maybe there's some ways to earn more of what could be offered here from Marie de Vince and the Flying Duchess in the future. Possibly, perhaps. This is something, again, that we've been exploring internally because you guys have been requesting it. We've been seeing this uh, on the forums, we've been seeing it in the discussions uh, about just ship accessibility and just new opportunities. So that is uh, going to happen. You will be able to call her in and that's gonna generate new ship opportunities for you as well. In addition to, you know, probably more ship dealer uh, appearing in the future of the game, um, just to provide even more on top of that, 
And of course, we talked about this last week, but I just want to put a lot of emphasis on it here. You will be able to have uh, more opportunities with ship selections as well. Um, we've talked about how maybe certain bases will offer certain types of ships. Maybe there would be a way to hold a ship, uh, stuff like that. Um, this is a bit up in the air right now with us internally since we are really heavily focused on delivering Drake, right? For the summer update that's releasing the summer. Um, but we do hear your pleas and some of that stuff we think would be really cool. So uh, just keep your eyes peeled because this screen right here, what you're looking at right here in the ship dealer, this is not done yet. This is not done. There's still more to come. All right, exciting, exciting time. Exciting time. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, we found a new shield ST. Goodness, I like that too. I'm losing, I'm losing a little bit of my precision, but um, I think we're gonna go with this shield ST. That's interesting. I, I really like speed words, but uh, we'll, we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna go ahead and sell this. Now I'm just like swapping because I can, but uh, honestly. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I want the, I want a combination of both. <laughs> oh my goodness. Summer lasts a while. Yeah, but it, it, um, it has an immediate start though, right? Can we buy her ship? No, 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 no. Uh, special passives? Uh, can you be more specific? Oh, in regards to the ships that she's sailing? Um, well, right now, like what you see again, like this is the, everything I've alluded to, um, you know, this is still a kind of work in progress situation that we're going for here. Um, but yeah, I mean, the passives that generate on these ships, it's going to be very similar to the passives of the ships that generate everywhere else right now, because they're just like randomly spawning in. But we recognize that there should be a little bit more control over that, so that if you wanted to go somewhere to get a specific thing, that you would have that opportunity. So uh, yeah, that was the, the whole sort of diatribe that I went off of talking about um, the ship dealer and what's going to be new to that. So yeah, no worries. No worries. Summer just ended over here, General. Yeah, I guess I should be talking about like the, you know, American summer, uh, however you want to determine that or the, what's it, what's the official term? Man, calling it American, that sounds like really, it kind of sounds dickish if I'm being honest. That's a, spe a special name. I'm looking this up because I, I now I need to know. The Northern Hemisphere summer? Is that, is that? There it is. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Thanks, Geekbyte. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I Googled it. I should have trusted you guys. Could have just looked. But uh, regardless, yes, the Northern Hemisphere summer, that, uh, that good old time, that's what we'll be uh, addressing the summer update. I think I'm going to keep, I'm going to use this new one. We're going to use this new one. We have a lot of different weapons that we've kind of been plugging around. I almost feel like we should change our ship. We could go over to a stinger since it's here. This Vanguard is too expensive. Also, those wings are not done because that's not a three, three plus. Wow. Um, but yeah. So a couple of the other updates that we have been working on, aside from Marie Devent now sells ships. Um, some of you probably have noticed this, but like all the buttons, all of the buttons that, have, that are kind of like floating around at the base, like in the menu, all of these, including, I think, uh, I think it's also here. Yeah, like over here too. 
They just got like a little border around them just to make them stand out just a little more. And also to bring it together in the overarching UX design. There's also a new device mastery sound. Let's uh, let's have a listen to that. If we have enough uh, components. We don't have enough components. We need more plasma. We need more plasma. Well, let's go destroy some bases so we can listen to that new sound. So like I said, it's work in progress. Uh, with the new ships at Marie DeVent's Flying Duchess. So that's important. Wow! The lag spike. Hold the phone. Let's just, let's, my goodness. So as you can see, uh, we have accomplished a thing. <laughs> what just happened? Uh, it's very likely that I ran into the ship that was in the ship dealer when I immediately spawned because I was looking at the ship and I didn't despawn it. Again, issues. Early access, don't worry about it. It'll be fixed before you even know it. So instead, we're gonna head back over to Union, I think, to have a gander at those ship opportunities. Uh, probably Prescott's gonna be our best bet. Oh, we can, we can fast travel. The ship being in the ship, yeah, basically. That's what happened. All right, here we go. Here we go. Much better. Ow. Three FPS mode confirmed. Oh my gosh, you found it. Yes, the very elusive, very rare three FPS mode. By popular request. <laughs> Could we please return to using jump gates? Jump gates? Where we're going, we don't need jump gates. Nice reference. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. All right. So let's see if there's a new ship that we can procure that's over here. We've got a Cyclops 3. Those wings aren't done. We got a Liberator 2 plus... Ooh. I'm kind of feeling bomber. Or a gunship. I'm kind of feeling gunship. Just for lots of firepower, you know? I think we're gonna, we're just gonna, you know, I'm not even gonna think about it. We're just gonna buy it, we're gonna go in. <laughs> Goodness. All right. Uh, we're also gonna change our style. Um, more colonial look. How's that? We'll go with that. And uh, we do need to find some, uh, we need to find some bases. We need to find some bases so we can get some plasma. Cause plasma always drops from debris, debris from like bases and stuff. And that's actually explained if you read the description of plasma. Drops from fuel tanks and other destructibles near stations and wreckage. It's in the description. So I'm not giving you like some secret information. It's in the game. So let's uh, see what jobs we've got. We don't have any, any base specific stuff. The search and destroy might not give us what we want. So instead we're just gonna go searching for trouble. That's how we're gonna do things. And even though our loot isn't fully uh, filled out, let's go ahead and just put our mining beam laser there. Our rapid auto cannon with our synchro pulse, that's gonna feel pretty good, I think. And away we go. Let's go looking for trouble.
That's a lot of jobs, yes. Yeah, we did receive some reports from people saying like, the jobs aren't working properly and like there's only like one that would spawn in or so. And just, just be aware, you know, there's some bugs that go with that, so. So yeah, I'm sure it'll get fixed. Mm. Unknown signal, let's do it. Come on base, come on. First attempt, let's do it. Give me a base, give me a base. Now we know how Eric dances at weddings. Ah, oh, it's never been a secret. <laughs> no base, ah, we got a whammy. All right, well. That's okay. Oh man. Gunship firepower though. That's pretty nice. I didn't even look at our passives at all. I just was like, gunship, big guns, chosen. Let's see what we rolled. Let's see what we rolled. Turret will also attack mines and 50 and 50% 50 increased boost speed. My big dumb face is in the way. Hang on a second. Look at that beauty. That is a new passive that will be added in the summer update. 50% increased boost speed. I'm calling that a win. Cause I love I love boosties. Give me those sweet, sweet, delicious boosties. Look at us go. Oh my gosh. That's nice. This is nice. All right, let's check out uh, whatever's in the shipwreck. Maybe we can find some plasma if we're really lucky. Or just straight up the memory recalibrators. That would be amazing. Come on, game. Don't fail me. I want to show everybody the new sound. It's nice. And some titanium. All right, I'll take it. I don't want that atheum though. It's it's too common. Psh, screw that. <laughs> what does the gunship do? More gun. What does the ultimate do? More gun. Absolutely. This is correct. This is absolutely correct. So will there be any development on the haptic feedback on the PlayStation controller now that they have released some PC tools and drivers for it, they being Sony? Uh, I mean, we can only hope. That would be a question that I would need to, uh, you know, dig at our team with. I don't believe that's been any sort of point of development right now, but uh, I mean, we can always hope, right? We can always hope. I know that in the sense of like um, gyro controls, that's always been, it's always kind of like a, a fickle territory to start diving into. It can be really hit or miss. Sometimes it's so easy. And then sometimes it's needlessly difficult. <laughs> so um, we'll just have to, we'll just have to find out. Maybe I'll have more information for you um, the beginning of next week, or maybe even the discord. If you want to ask us a question in the appropriate channel there, the Ask Dev's Question channel, and I can follow up with you. My instincts are telling me, I don't think we are, but um, but I'd really like to get confirmation. 
Because that's a good question, Evan. That's a good question. Are you planning on supporting the Steam Deck? Steam Deck's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Um, we will let you guys know what opportunities. Uh, let me <clears throat> let me start this over, just in case anybody uh, is curious out there. So I know there's a lot of console players. Consoles can be incredibly convenient, especially with PC prices kind of like going through the roof for there for a while. You know they are coming back down, but we get it. You know there's an accessibility there that's wonderful. It's fantastic, and we are coming to consoles. We are in fact coming to consoles. Which consoles? We will be making that announcement at the time of Gamescom this year. Now we won't have, um, I, I don't think there's gonna be like anything, um, I'm trying to think, of, I'm trying to think of how to word this. Uh, but the, the, the main thing to note is that we will have uh, an announcement that's gonna cover a lot of what that looks like, uh, the audiences that are going to uh, be jumping all over the opportunities that we'll have with Everspace 2. And, um, you know, some people who've already been playing with the Steam Decks, uh, they've been running Everspace 2. They've been giving us feedback saying like, man, this is really good. It would be really nice if you had the full support. And, you know, we're not going to deny that that would be amazing. So we're thrilled that, you know, the tests that you guys have done do seem to be going in the right direction. But again, we will make all of the appropriate official announcements for all the consoles that we're coming to um, around Gamescom this year. All right? Cool. Some, uh, I, I know that there was a joke question from Tiberius, but Michael did answer it. I wanna share this with everyone. Somebody asked, can I play Everspace 2 on my phone? And the only way that you'd be able to do that, Michael's already answered, is that you do it so through like a streaming service. Uh, we are not going to make this into a mobile game. Nope, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen at all. And I look over at the YouTube chat and all I see are, it's, what? What is happening? <laughs> Whew. I'm a little lost. I'm looking to make sure that there weren't any questions that I missed. Will we have the ability to sell resources for extra cash? Cobalium? Yeah, I wanna make sure that you are not left out uh, and just drowned out by whatever else is going on over there. Um, yeah, so um, we haven't like fully dove into what we want to do, like what our vision looks like for the sort of marketing and trading side of Everspace 2. You've probably heard me directly say in the streams, maybe you haven't, but I have said directly in the streams that what we'd really like to do with this is we'd like to create um, like trade lanes. We'd like to create opportunistic routes where you can profit off certain resources, like certain stations, having uh, greater profit margins for an item versus another one um, that you would then be able to like carry around. And you know, especially with the resources like this on the map being added, where it's like, you can see which places are rich with iron. It's currently on iron. You know, you could probably assume like Union, they're probably gonna pay a bit of a bigger price for iron versus Zarkov and especially Cedo. You know, you go over to Cedo like at Alcyone Station, they're, psh, Iron's gonna be super cheap there, and you try to sell it to them, it's gonna be super cheap, uh, what they're gonna give you. But over here in Union, without any iron to boot, it would make sense that you would sell it for a higher price. Now, that is what we would like to do, and I believe it's still technically planned. I believe, I'm, I hope I'm not getting in trouble, Andy, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, um, or Hans Christian. Um, but yeah, that is still very much what we would like to do with these systems, with this marketing and um, trading sort of aspects. So um, it's also an interesting uh, space to get into since the crafting inventory as a whole is something we'd like to make fairly separate from your trading commodities, especially. So like nanofibers, small arms, um, mining equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Like those are gonna be the goods that we'd really like to put more emphasis on when it comes to these features that are coming down the line. Um, but yeah, we've we've heard the question before and you know, in the prior state of the game, these were buy, like they were sellable, right? And you can buy them now, like you can go to specific stations to buy them. Um, so it's something that we still have to explore, but there's gonna be a lot of gamification that surrounds that dialogue internally. 
And there's going to be a lot of decisions that are made for the sake of how that functions in the gameplay experience as a whole. So we can't just say, oh yeah, you can trade them freely and sell them and all that type of stuff. Like I can't necessarily guarantee that. Um, we'll just have to see what those opportunities look like. And with a little bit of hope, a little bit of luck maybe, uh, we'll see a fruitful outcome for a trading and marketing sort of uh, design to the game. So I like that station. The seat of scientists wanted me to check up on. It would be surprising if there was still research being conducted here. Whoop! I just passed right through that. Let's try getting inside and see what we can find. So excellent. We got this power core socket. I always get confused on this mission now. I'm gonna blame all of you for it. Because there was that one time I streamed and I died like three times to mines. Do you guys remember that? And so I'm like kind of scared to, to go back in here and do it again. Wait, I thought turret targeting mines was a passive. It, it is, yeah, that's that's one of the passives I have. Turret will also target mines. That's why I was using it, yes. Yeah, I figured I might as well use the feature. I'm gonna be a little bit of a punk here. I want your loot. So what's kind of fun about this game is that we constantly have these little sound effect bugs. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. No big deal, no big deal. Everything's fine. Just gonna do some testing later. Oh my goodness. It never ends. <laughs> you see that audio bug a lot? Yeah, it happens here and there and it's uh, it's one of those that's like hard to isolate. Now is this the, yes, finally. This is where we were trying to get to. I kind of like the way it sounds, but uh, definitely not preferred. Oh goodness. Definitely not intended is what I mean to say. All right. Let's see if we can find some, uh, what are we looking for? Plasma. Oh, ouch. Ah, oh, we didn't quite break the shield. Unfortunate. That'll do it though. Here's that plasma we were looking for. That's what I like to see. D 
delicious. See, just these little destructibles, that's what you want to be looking for. Surely we got a little bit more, yeah? That should be enough. At least for the moment. So, uh, we want to make some more memory recalibrators. Ah, oh, yes, perfect. So, um, I also got a little bit of clarity from T's from last time, uh, who did inform me that the craft multiple opportunity here, so like, I just crafted two independently from one another. We will have it to where you can craft multiple at the same time. So if you wanted to just make four all of a sudden, you could do that. You could do that. So let's see if there's anything that I can... No, everything has four or nothing. All right. So we still need to get two more of those. We need more plasma. And if I can't find it fast enough, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna make it. Hey, the sound's fixed. Awesome. Gotta love it when games randomly are like, oh, everything's fine. <laughs> Pretty sure Gero's just hating this stream right now. He's probably not happy with how it's turning out. <laughs> well, my weekend plans are shot. Uh. <clears throat> All right. Some more titanium. All right, we're gonna keep searching for more plasma. Can my ship have a rainbow trail? So I actually love this question. Um, you know, engine trails are not really something that we've seen or we've talked about too much. Engine trails, you know, they're very consistent to, um, it's how we feel as a whole that engine trails would be uh, distinguished in our kind of like universe, if you will. So like your, um, your side of like your standardized controls, all your engines are orange. Your thrusters are blue. We kind of like that distinction. You know, I know some people are like, man, it'd be so cool if you could change that or do something with it. We've heard that. It kind of goes into that territory of like, we agree that would be awesome, but that would be like another extra level of customization that we're just not sure if we can get to that or not, right? Would it be cool? Yes, it would be awesome. It'd be so neat, you know, to be able to go in here and change a billion and a half things with your ship customization. I cannot guarantee what is going to make the cut and what's not because there's still a lot more content we have to do first and being an aesthetic option that's going to be kind of last on the list so maybe in the future there might be some means to having a multicolored engine trail maybe and that is an incredibly strong maybe ladies and gentlemen we're talking like chances of happening this is a hundred this is zero we're talking like it's, I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> so, let's take that with a grain of salt, if you will. Now let's look for more destructibles. I'm sure there's several in here, around here. There's gotta be. This place is nothing but stations, right? That's all I need, I guess. <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. No, I mean, I, I would love to be more specific on that front, because again, like, I think it would be really cool. But um, at the end of the day, we have to make sure that the gameplay is centralized around these core mechanics and features that have to make it into the game first and foremost, that work together to create a pretty awesome product. And then after that, we can start talking about that gravy to smother it all under. And customizations, a bit of that. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Where are all my destructibles at? I'm getting so caught up in your questions, I can't remember where anything's at. Thanks for answering in detail. Yeah, no, yeah, no worries. I'm, I am happy to help. I love giving you guys information. Let's go around the backside here. Maybe there's, um, maybe what I'm looking for is around there. A little nook and cranny behind here, I think. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. This is not, this is not what I'm looking for. All right. I'm getting ready to just make the memory recalibrators by using a cheat menu, because it's taking a while. Oh my gosh. But keep on the questions. You guys are asking some really good questions today, and I, I really appreciate it when you do that, because uh, there's a strong focal point here in the community. Speaking of which, and speaking about the community, you know, always know that you can get more information by joining us over at these other places, like Discord, uh, we've got Twitch, YouTube, uh, Twitter, we also have a subreddit as well, which has just always been a fam fantastic place to ask questions and you know engage with uh, all of us. So it's uh, you know it's a remarkable place to get all of that uh, information. It's delightful. We're always answering. We're always uh, b being as fruitful as we possibly can with you all. Uh, it's good times. It's good times. So uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, while you guys were away. Um, I don't, I just found some plasma. Um, so we're just going to make uh, some memory recalibrators. I'll show you this little sound effect because we can. And maybe Kate, come up with a couple extra ones for next time. So we're just going to, we're just going to reset this and then put it all back on. So when you upgrade, you have the normal sound. When you max out, this is what was added. Wonderful. Ah, all of that for a single little sound. But hey, it's important. Those little details, they can really make things work. So excellent. That's another little detail that we have plugged in. Um, there are a lot of other tweaks though that we have been working on. Um, like for example, dismantling and how this all kind of works. Let me see if it, I can kind of show this. You can kind of see it above me. You might notice like the amount of goods. There's uh, there's some variety there, right? Now this is stacking. The numbers are stacking from everything that we've done at once. This is just gonna be a single flock option. Hang on a second, am I, am I blocking this? We got one circuitry and one spare part. Okay. Again, same thing. Same thing. One of the things we noticed is that in this crafting, um, like you can even tell right here, I have over 2,000 spare parts. I have over 1,000 circuitries. Um, and I have 41 star charge conduits. Now, through the natural progression of the game, it does make sense that you're gonna have a lot more commons than you're gonna have of like superiors. Yes, of course, but that's a bit of an extreme. And so we are going back through this and saying, how much actually makes sense here? This is something I said that we would be doing. You know, we talked about how like certain uh, items are gonna require certain things to bring them all together. The consumables is probably the best example of this right now since that's a combination of those uh, crafting ingredients mixed with components, right? So this is still a bit of a work in progress, but the values, the amounts that you're getting um, we're kind of scaling back the common resources that come out. So in order to get a lot of that common stuff, you're just gonna have to scrap a lot of common stuff, but also higher tier stuff uh, ends up still giving you that too. So like when we scrap this Baron Executioner, you're still getting common parts. So it's not like they're hard to find. Like no matter what you're getting it, we just had to like scale back how much the baseline standard was accruing since again, like these numbers are it's pretty nuts. So little balances and tweaks on that front. Um, I can assure you that this is actually going to be a headache saver more than anything else. It might not seem like it right now. Uh, but we also are increasing the rarity of items. Uh, of an item... Hang on a second. Let me reword that. Increasing the rarity of an item through modification. It leads lower numbers of rarity parts. So... Um, Th 
what I mean by that is like taking this pulse laser, if I wanted to increase the rarity, these values have been adjusted. The spare parts and the circuitry. Now there are only 12. So stuff like that. It's just scaling these numbers down to be a bit more uh, digestible, shall we say? And through that, I think that kind of ties into the prior question about selling our crafting materials for goods. Because if, as we're going through this direction and you're gonna have less of these spare parts and stuff, that means it kind of makes more sense to open this up for some level of trading perhaps. Since you're not gonna have like so much, you just sell it all for a billion credits and then you go on your way because it doesn't affect you at all, right? Like. By balancing that out, it's gonna promote new opportunities. Blah, 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 design, design, game dev. Um, and let's see, is there anything else that's super important to kind of cover at this time? Not really. Not really at this point in time. Doing a quick double check. Okay, okay. So uh, we did, we updated the explorer descriptions as well. So explorer descriptions have also received a tweak. I think before it was just like, each one was like, go explore this, the Cedo, go explore the Union, go explore the Zarkov. It was like super basic. So we just, you know, just a little change, but you know, add a little bit of flavor text to the game. So if you guys who really like to read want all those little details, you can uh, go through there and read them all. Like Cedo Explorer, it's now take a tour and tidy up your new neighborhood in the remote hinterlands of the DMZ. Um, and they're all there. You'll see them eventually. Eventually. Excellent. Excellent. All right. There's a new person here. Could we get another sneak peek of the ice world? All right. All right, all right, twist my arm. Twist my arm. Let's head back over to our lovely little ice planet. For sure. Yes. Yes. shield drones providing a shield for this retaliator scout and also again this increases his frost damage that he does to you so if he were to hit me we are really fast and I'm moving a bit his frost effect would be a lot more with multiple repeat shots And this guy's fast. Woo! How did that not get you? All right. Oh, 
that doesn't work. Oh, that's unfortunate. I was hoping to put a turret on that ice. Retaliators, no matter where you're at, they're gonna have this nice frosty weaponry. And if you're not fast enough, you'll get frozen. Oh, a Drake signal decoder. We should use that and do that, right? Drake signal decoder confirmed. I mean, it's another system. It's gonna have them. Ah, yes, the drone carrier. They're cross beams. get a mission to this planet called Let It Go. Please don't ever change. I'm so... I, I don't have words. Alright. Bomber! Ooh, ouch. Frost shield drones, like they, um, they really start to transform. Oh, gosh, we got frozen. Oh, <laughs> ouch, that was painful. Wow. Just uh, doing this to recover our armor and our shields more effectively. Wow, that was painful. Also wanna just get the most effective use out of our shots there. Wow, all right, well now that, that turned the tide for us quite a bit more. Woo! You do not want to get frozen, let me tell you what. Ow! Ow! We're not supposed to show you yet! But thank you, teammates!
Hang on, hang on a second. Hang on a second. We're not supposed to show this yet. We're not supposed to... This isn't supposed to be here. But nice colors. I like your colors. It's pretty... It's pretty nice. It's pretty... It's pretty... Pretty great coloration, if I do say so myself. I... Definitely... Definitely... Definitely like the theming going on there. <laughs> Go away, you're ruining the stream. All right. <laughs> All right. Woo! a pleasant little location where mad chaos ensues, right? I still really like how when you're like under objects, it's not raining on you. Whoop. frozen again because I feel like right over here we would just meet our demise and also for anybody who's wondering like when we got frozen last time if there's any reason why we didn't just like explode instantaneously we do have a perk that saves us when we reach uh, zero health and that's a very imp important perk to have when you're um, live streaming <laughs> Oh my goodness. Look at all these turrets on this place though. Goodness gravy. All right. Yeah, I'm very much centralizing all my stuff going on right around here for very intentional purposes, as you can all imagine, but uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this incredibly brief look at um, one of the new systems inside of Drake, a site that the retaliators hold, and their frost shield drones that we're seeing for the first time, providing those benefits of defense as well as offense, and their ability to freeze your ship. That's about all the time we have for this uh, space. Whoop. But I guess we'll see what happens in the next stream and maybe we can show uh, a little bit more of the lava world and crack open the doors for discussing the Zerulia faction. What's new? What did I do? What did I do? I'm just, I'm showing this, the site that we discussed about. Takes note to include that perk in my streams. Yeah, no, seriously. Uh, highly recommend 10 out of 10 uh, going for that perk. Especially if you're doing like very hard um, and, you know, being rather um, <clears throat> chaotic in your approach. You know, there's, there's definitely some lack of intentionality behind my equipment, my loadout. I could probably deal with optimizing this a little bit further, but you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm happy with how it's come along. I'm happy with how it's all along. Let's, uh, let's see what this has. 
Corrosive Death. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, obviously a new item that you haven't seen yet, but that's a signal decoder in Drake. Corrosive Death. All right, interesting. We'll put a Peacemaker on there, but yeah. So at this point, we are going to jump on over to the segment where we talk and show a lot about what you guys have been up to. Um, because, you know, we like to highlight that as well. You guys are pretty awesome on that front um, and have shown um, some incredibly quality photos, like your photo taking skills, through our experience. And um, it's just very pleasant. It's very pleasant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack open uh, this bit where we can talk about the shots you've been taking. And I went a little bit more detailed in my approach this time around. So we're going to see a number of people uh, multiple times. A number of people multiple times uh, with their stuff being shown. Uh, but we need, a, we need like a little transition here uh, between this and... Uh, uh, the images so let me just let me let me pull a maneuver here let's do this because it's fun right we're just gonna play this trailer again just for kicks and giggles because everybody loves the trailer Oh yeah, no, that's that's just that's just wonderful. Oh, that's just wonderful. All right, so uh, we're gonna go into this segment now where we talk about you guys and the images that you've taken. Um, if you guys don't know, that little snippet trailer, that's just a 30 second long little trailer for you. Um, but there's actually another trailer that was uploaded to our YouTube channel. So if you have not been to the YouTube channel yet, I highly encourage you to cycle on over there it's a, I think it's a minute long, so it's got twice as much content as that little snippet did. What? And um, you might be able to focus in on a couple new and really cool details. Perhaps. Maybe. Possibly. It's, it's fun. It's nice. So, the shots that we have today to present to you, we've got uh, just a handful. Just a handful. We're going to really focus in on these. The first one comes from Hybar. This one got a lot of uh, arrows up in the Discord. You guys really like this. I think maybe it was because of the color palette kind of being echoed around here with these oranges and sort of teals. So that's nice. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this, this, these color preferences, but you know, I can't be one to judge because I've had some incredibly weird looking spaceships myself. Uh, but yeah, it's very distinct. I'll say that. Very distinct. So good, good stuff. I love it. You're impressed, uh, Kazaa, speaking about the, the trailer and the location, uh, impressed how clean it looks with all the lighting effects and the enemies. I'm, I'm imagining it'd be a pain to optimize for performance. Oh, believe you me when I say the team has had their fair share of issues and bringing these new locations to fruition. Um, there were more than a handful of times where we were doing play testing. It's like we'd, we'd try the space out and it was just like, Oh, hi, I heard you like frame rates. Well, you're not getting them here. You know, so it's it's a process. It's absolutely a process. Um, I really enjoy this photo from Excel, who's who's actually in the, the chat right now. Um, I love these alignment shots. I don't, I, I'm not gonna explain why other than there's a bit of nostalgia that's happening for me and uh, through the history of our teammates here. But also it's just, you know, when you get that in truly symmetrical shot, and when you're looking at this, like look at look at the lines coming across the ship. We're talking dang near in the middle, almost near perfect symmetry happening here with the planet uh, and the moon. Like that is, mwah, that's chef's kiss. This, this shot was not conceived by just pushing Z and like, eh, let me see what I can do. Like that one took a lot of effort, a lot of attention very very clean so nicely done excel i dig it really comes together 
It makes me happy. Mm. There's been a lot of screenshots in the last three or so weeks. Yeah, there have been. Yep. Yeah, but I kind of I kind of filtered through that and I just chose uh, a few this time around. I also wanted to talk about some fan art as well, since we haven't really seen too much fan art recently and pop that open. We have another one from High Barf. Uh, this one, I, I'm not sure how this happened. I believe this shot was taken before my recent streams, but my color palette on my Scout that I've been using was similar to this. It was awfully similar to this. I just saw that. I was like, there's no way. What? How in the world did that happen? Um, complete coincidence. But I, I dig it. I dig it a lot. Uh, I'd like to see... Um, I'd like to see more of your personalities come out of your ship designs. You know, it, several screenshots, you know, obviously there's some that are like more focused on environments like this, but um, being able to see what style your ship is and the color palettes that you're using, that's something that I find a lot of fun. Because then when you see a ship that's styled a certain way or has the right silhouette, you just know, you can like look at it and be like, that's Spoot Knight's ship. That's Excel's ship. That's the Chemical Bros ship. That's... Yeah, insert username here's ship. Like, I, I love that stuff. So share your ship. Just take a photo of it. If you've done any level of customization to it at all, pop that into the screenshots channel because I want to see it. I love that. I love that so much. Really cool. Next up, we have the Chemical Bro um, using his dynamics and his angles always to great effectiveness. Per usual. Per usual. And I really dig the way that he's brought this one together. Of course. Zipping away from the planet. You know, we got these these lines. They almost look like little heartbeats. You know, that's particularly interesting. Like, you know, you got the, the little waves there. I think that's interesting. But I love how that all comes together. I can zoom in with my mouse in this application. How have I... Guys... This is revolutionary. This is revolu- I didn't realize that I could zoom in and I can- I can do this? Nobody told me? <laughs> this is amazing. With all the high-res images that you guys shoot, that- I'm- I'm so happy now. Wow. The, I- I'm- I'm kind of mind blown. How did I not notice? Okay, maybe I'm just dumb. Anyway, I love this shot. I love this ship. Uh, we got a slew of these ships that are like, uh, especially the darker tones that the Chemical Bro usually likes the more reflective tones, I should say, with a highlight color. Does a dang good job on that front. So the Chemical Bro, we've got one more. This is a great example of that uh, once again, where he's putting a lot of emphasis on the lights in a darkened environment. This one, like, this make, it, it looks like it's a toy that somebody's like holding and showing you, like, check this out. You know what I'm talking? Like, that's, what a fantastic macro shot of the uh, Vanguard here. This really highlights all of those little details. Hey guys, you know you can use your mouse to, <laughs> to zoom in and kind of whatever. Um, but I just, I love how this comes together. Love it so much. Such fantastic work. And there's just enough detail to see that, you know, it's actually in outer space. You've got that planet there, you got the light behind it. This might even be a Prescott. Uh, but uh, regardless, just the quality of how do you even describe this? Like it's it's almost like a it's almost like an emotion. <laughs> so well done, the chemical bro. Love the way that it's being brought together per usual. Wait, was there a question that I missed? Oh no, hang on a second. Oh no, you guys are just bantering. That's fine. That's totally fine. Uh, reminder though, if you guys do still have questions while we're looking at community screenshots and stuff, uh, please ask. It's totally fine. We are a very open development team. Uh, very transparent. All right. So we've got uh, this next shot from Dark Chaos, who does some really amazing uh, environment shots. He actually posted one more that I didn't quite have enough time to plug in here. Uh, just dropped it in the Discord like right before the stream started. Uh, but I love his use of purples and yellows uh, in this particular scene. Believe it or not, purple and yellow, I mean, 
I know somebody's gonna argue and say, that's orange. Yeah, okay, it's technically orange, but the ship is yellow, I'm counting that. But purples and yellows are incredibly delightful complementary colors, much like orange and blue, much like green and red. Uh, so there's a bit of that happening where we have these blues on the verge of being purples and these oranges on the verge of being yellows uh, <clears throat> really coming together in this sequence. And uh, it creates it creates a happy moment for me as a viewer that just makes it truly stand out. Even in the midst of all of these vibrant colors, you still have this detail of this um, you know, asteroid in the background with something going on there. What could it be? A base? You know, what have you. Um, all the while, this little this little turd is zipping around, teleporting, making it hard as heck to shoot him down. But very nicely done. Very nicely done. And frankly speaking, I love the look of that stinger. I love the look of that stinger. I think that comes together as well. Really good stuff. Really clever, really great. Of all the Vindicator drone names Chat has come up with today, what was your favorite? Or can you please come up with one yourself? I was reading through those and it was incredibly hard to like pick an authentic drone name that was just like my favorite. Cause there were too many, there, there's too many. Um, honestly, like if I could name a drone, it would be very simple. It, it's just simple names, you know, just like Jeff, Bob, Frank, Delilah. You know, that's where I'm going to go. So, you know, we're, it doesn't need to be complicated. All right. Next one up, we have yet another from Dark Chaos. I love this one so much more environmental. It's it's almost got like this horror movie vibe to it with how the, the coloration's going. The light source, you know, hitting over here on the side. Uh, and you've got like this foggy... It's space right before we have this entry point that's way too dark to see inside of. Is there a shadowy figure or creature lurking in the distance? I don't know. Maybe there's something there. It's hard to say, but these cables giving it somewhat of like an almost an organic tone, an organic structure in there makes it all the more creepy. Because like at first glance, those almost look like tendrils coming down. It's almost like something, something's lurking, right? So very great use of, uh, <clears throat> of framing on the front of this imagery. I love how it comes together and all the lines are drawing you into what's around that bend. Like what's, what's coming up? What's, what are we going to face? What's the next challenge? All the while still doing what uh, Dark Chaos does best and highlighting these uh, figures and utilizing those light sources to make things stand out. Even this lonesome little red light, he's playing his part in all of this. It's showing you just how dark everything is in that lower left corner. It's nuts. It's nuts, the thoughts of how you guys carefully craft these shots. Like, it's it's beautiful. So thank you for your hard work and determination of bringing this all together, because I cannot get enough of it. It's so stinking delicious. Makes me so happy. You guys still coming up with more drone names? Oh my goodness. Oh, did I not, did I miss a, another question? Okay, I see, I see. All right, cool. May I guess that you didn't name your kids then? Oh my gosh, Sirloin. That is so incredibly savage. Oh my gosh. Oh goodness. Oh, my, my wife and I tag teamed that process. Thank you very much. All right, let's look at Spoot Knight's photo here. I love this shot. I love it. I love everything about it. The end, period. Just absorb, let your eyeballs receive the beauty that is it's just freaking awesome. I love it. Great shot, Spoot Knight. I love explosions. I love the look of the ship. Great use of dynamic angles. Great use of the depth of field. Framing's perfect. Color grading's perfect. I don't even know if like you adjusted the color at all. 
It looks like an authentic screenshot, but man, it's great. Fantastic. Yeah, I, there's a there's a small group. Maybe it's a little bit larger than I think it is, but there's a there's a group within our community that has this huge appreciation for like jet fighters. And if I'm not mistaken, Sputnite's one of them. Um like authentic authentic like military fighters and whatnot. And uh, some of you guys like, man, you really go ham with the interceptor and just like it's the only ship. Don't choose anything else. I love it. You guys are great. Shout out to Ace Combat. Okay, excellent. Very, very good. All right. <laughs> See more silly questions. <clears throat> And the last shot, uh, standard shot that you guys have offered um, that I chose was again from Chemical Bro, which is, of course, highlighting his bold colorations. It's the, the light and darkness of these shots. This one, I believe, was modified, however. It was in the screenshots channel, but I believe it was modified, so I'm going to consider this fan art. But uh, it's pretty cool still how just taking those extremes of light and dark and just sending them even further can create something that truly looks pretty epic. Very, very good stuff. You guys want more beatboxing? I haven't done beatboxing in a while. Oh my gosh. I, I can do some beatboxing. It's not going to be good. I hope that you're okay with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So now with all of these screenshots out of the way, like really want to give a shout out to High Barf here today, the Chemical Bro, Dark Chaos, Spoot Knight, uh, Excel. You guys have been continuing to pump out uh, excellent shot out of, after excellent shot after excellent shot. Um, and dang it, Excel, I think it might be time for you. I think it might be... I think it might be time. So when we head back into the Discord, I think that we are going to update you with a particular role that you have been attempting to get for a while. I think you've earned it. So uh, Excel, I believe, is gonna join our League of Galactic Photographers. We are gonna slap that on you, but I want more content because anybody who slows down with their streams of beautiful shots, I can, just as easily as I can give rolls, I can take them away. So don't let me down. Don't let me down. All right. So now we're going to pull up the fan art uh, segment. And uh, here we've got the Chemical Bro, who obviously modified this one a bit, uh, but still love it. I love that exchange between the orange and the blue with this vessel that I don't even know what color it is. I feel like this is one of those is the dress... Uh, what, what's the color of the dress sort of things. Uh, but I think that's green. <laughs> I can't quite tell. Um, but I love it. I love every single thing about this shot. Um, great use of framing, of course, and, and identifying all the necessary ingredients to, to draw a person into this. Everything from the debris field to, to the lower right, to the chunks of asteroids above. There's a story to be told and I want to know more. So excellent work per usual, the chemical bro. Very, very neat. Does that mean potential for galactic builder role if I get some more builds done? Dashra, you know, that's a good point. That's a good point. You have been pouring your heart and soul out for those. Um, Maybe, maybe we'll talk. Oh my gosh. Dashra being uh, an individual who has these like plastic pieces that they've put together to make different ships in Everspace uh, franchise. So it's good stuff. Next up, we've got another one from the Chemical Bro. Um, I, I love this. I love this. I love this very much. <laughs> um, but uh, it all comes together incredibly well. I mean, just, explosions are great, right? Ex you can never go wrong with explosions. And those dang outlaws, like, we gotta, we gotta take care of them, those nerds. It's a good time. Uh, but I also like the way that this sh ship looks. I think it's a, 
It might be one of the standard color palettes, but still, I think it's pretty clean. Um, just again, wanting to shout out you guys who do take the time, effort, energy to customize your ship a little bit further because I love seeing those shots. And, uh, you know, the Photoshop work going on, you can tell this is Photoshopped because there's no way that ship's actually that color. Obviously, that's, that's what's Photoshopped here. Uh, but it's fun. It's good time. Keep it up. Next up, the Chemical Bro. Once again, this is basically the Chemical Bro section at this point in time. I've already talked about how I love alignment shots. It's great. There you go. This one's highlighting the Harbinger D3 Tier 2. Whoops, whoops. I didn't mean to go to the next one. Hang on. Harbinger DT D3 Tier 2 Vanguard. You can see all the way down in this little lower left corner that my face is still kind of blocking. There it is. Boom. You can't miss it. Wow, what a zoom in. I'm so glad I learned about this feature with the mouse wheel. But what a fantastic shot. I love it. It's not perfectly aligned, so uh, five points from Gryffindor for that. But still, um, I love it. <clears throat> I think it comes together so powerfully well. And also glad that we're uh, changing things up. Uh, the Chemical Bro is constantly changing what ship he's flying for photography, and that's always a pleasure. So good, good stuff. Excellent. All right. Last but not least is the Chemical Bro and one more shot that he has captured. Um, echoing the photo from left to right. So it's technically one shot that was then um, made into two. Like this is basically the shot. This is the shot that he took. Actually, technically it's, it's this side. This is the shot that he took and then he just duplicated it. But I love it. It's great. It's a clever trick. And I don't think almost anybody can notice unless you look at this uh, photo for a little bit and realize how there's certain things uh, that um, <clears throat> that <laughs> are asymmetrical and certain things that aren't. But uh, regardless, I love it. I love it. I love everything about what you guys have accomplished from the screenshot side and things that you've been capturing and talking about. Um, it's all been so rich and so good. And I want you guys to keep it up, especially as we welcome Excel into the new group of galactic photographers. Know that any of you could potentially get this role. All you have to do is go to our Discord, take some photos, slap them in there, and keep doing it. The longer you keep doing it, the longer you keep the role. Now, I do go in there and I prune every now and then to see uh, who's keeping up with their duties and who's not. I don't like taking things away though, so it's 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 pretty lax, honestly. It's pretty chill. But uh, yeah, aside from that, um, I guess I should also give Spoot Knight a little shout out because he recently got the um, uh, he got the very rare badge of bragging rights. We had some incredibly good conversation recently, and um, you know, anytime you guys are like engaged with the community you're gonna get out of it just about as much as you put into it. And Spoot Knight, he's put a lot into this community. He's really looking out for um, you guys like and how he's responding to you. And he's been very responsive to me. He's asked really solid questions. And I know that you're like in the chat right now, Spoot Knight, and you don't know what to say. Don't worry about that too much. I just wanted to give credit where credit is due. And so now we have two individuals who have bragging rights, incredibly rare role. Uh, its description was also updated in the Discord. So if you're looking to get any of those sweet roles, again, it's all a matter about what you're truly pouring into this space as we are creating more space. Ah, wonderful. And if you want to be a part of that, um, you know, I've flashed the screen a number of times, but sincerely, you can always join us by heading over to the Discord, heading over to Reddit and Twitter and Twitch and YouTube and all these things. And you can provide information and insight and ask questions and, you know, truly be like an authentic member of what we're trying to craft here and just being a good sport about it and just being positive and, or even just being uh, like having constructive criticism. All of these things are what help shape and transform uh, everything on the front of our community. And it's incredibly valuable. So thank you sincerely for all of you uh, who have uh, done this. Thank you for everybody who has continued to pour their hearts into this uh, sincerely. It's it's such a wonderful time. So um, be a part of it with us. It's it's fun. I promise. We're we're fun. We're fun. 
So uh, last time you're gonna see my face. You have been awesome today. I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for all things Everspace 2 related. This is a screenshot. This is an older screenshot of this location that we showed you uh, today. Uh, we are excited to show you so much more about these environments. Um, and yeah, I won't stop being Eric Schrader. You don't stop being awesome. And I'll catch you next time. All right. Toodles. Hey, just a reminder, Everspace 2, uh, is, that, is it on sale right now? Hang on a second. Is it on sale? Yeah, it's on sale right now. Do you believe that? It is 20% off right now. Right the heck now. That's actually the most Everspace 2 has ever been off in the existence of it. And also note that whenever Space 2 is completed in the first quarter of 2023, that's next year, for those of you who can't math very well, it's totally fine, I understand, the struggle's real. That price point will, in fact, increase. So, 20% off right now. If you want to pick it up and wait, that's fine. It's the cheapest it'll probably ever be. If you want to hang on to your money, that's also fine. I'm just making sure you are aware. I want you to have all of these details. All right. You guys asked me to beatbox, I guess I will. I don't know how good this is gonna be. I didn't prepare for this, so let's just do it. All right, we'll just get out of the way. My lips are dry, oh my gosh. That's all I got. All right, we're done. Oh my goodness. Seriously, my, ugh. So we're gonna go raid, we're gonna go raid Corbin. We're gonna go raid Corbin now, and we're gonna tell him that he has to beatbox, and he's not allowed to not beatbox because we did it, okay? You hear me? That's how it's gonna happen. That's how it's gonna happen. All right, so we need to, uh, we, need to we need to do this. It's, this is how it happens, okay? He is obligated. He's obligated now. That's how it's gonna work, I suppose, in some way, shape, or form. Wait a second, is he not streaming? <gasps> He's not streaming? How dare. He has, oh, oh, that devious, devious individual. Okay, so we need somebody, we need somebody to raid. Guys, who are we, who are we raiding? Who are we raiding? We have to find somebody. We have to find, how dare he? How dare he? I look over at his channel and he's hosting Rockfish Games. Thanks for that, by the way, Corbin. But still, oh my gosh. How is he not streaming on Friday? I know, right? That's what I'm saying. That is what I'm saying. Goodness. Here we go. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna surprise this random person who apparently is streaming Everspace One. They have they have 27 followers. They're a tiny little channel. Um, I have no idea who this person is whatsoever. 
Maybe this is an incredibly bad idea. I don't, I don't care. They're playing Everspace One. Let's go give them some love. All right. Let's go give them some love. So uh, we are going to, uh, we're going to raid them. They do have a follower slash subscriber only chat. So just keep that in mind, but we might as well give them some love anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, so there we go. All right, guys, don't stop being awesome. I won't stop being Eric. Toodles.